let's look at our next question. Um, even though the folds aren't colliding during growl, are they still vibrating, therefore producing the pitch, and the air epiglottic folds just modulating the timbre, or are the air epiglottic folds definitely producing the pitch too? Okay, yeah, very nerdy question, but let's get back to it. <clears throat> air epiglottic folds do not produce pitch. Only the vocal folds produce pitch. And we can talk about acoust acoustics and overtones, but really our, our instrument is the vocal folds. That's what creates creating the sound. So if we're talking about in growl, <clears throat> which is ooh, getting the arytenoid cartilages to vibrate laterally. Let me see, I might as well just pop up this graphic in there again. Um, <clears throat> So we've got, these are the retinoid cartilages. They're going to vib vibrate back and forth in, in rattle sound. And then if, if you get them drumming this way, it's a darker sound. It's a darker sound because the epiglottis comes down and covers it up. It gives it this nice, it, it just covers up. It gives it a little bit more depth in there, the darkness. So... So the vocal folds are underneath. <laughs> Let me show you another one because I think we need to have these illustrations. So we're talking about the arytenoid cartilages have been cut off here, okay? They're back here. These are the vocal folds. But the arytenoid cartilages are higher. Let's look back over here. So the top of the arytenoid cartilages here, the vocal folds are actually attached down towards the base and strung to the base of the epiglottis. So when the epiglottis is coming forward, then it's the top of the arytenoids that are banging against the epiglottis. The vocal folds are still underneath. They're down here. The epiglottis is up here. It's coming back. So the, the sound is actually, the, of the vocal folds, the pitch is being made below the activity. Of, of the um, of the arytenoids. Let me see if I missed anything in that question. Uh, therefore, produce, yeah, the vocal folds are producing the pitch. The arytenoid folds modulating the timbre. I mean, I I don't know. I don't really think that the arytenoid folds are playing a big role modulating timbre um, in in anything really. They are involved in maybe mostly in that. <laughs> Uh, grunt sound where they're moving around but um, I can't say that I've done uh, research or looked at a thousand uh, singers and what's going on in their throat we're just this is just me um, talking off the cuff what, what do you think Addy? well I think that from what we know at least um, it's mostly about as you said the arytenoids and um, uh, the petiole that, that gets like drummed um, together with our retinoids. If it's like rattle, then only this, the growl would be also this. So the arytoglottic well, folds, I don't think they play such a big role, no. No. Well, definitely not in pitch um, yeah. or timbre. I, you know, they're in the vocal track, but timbre is, is not usually, uh, arytoglottic folds are kind of just, they're just part of the, they're part of the epilarynx. They, they're really important, you know, in the attaching the epiglottis down to the arytenoids. That's just part of the structure, yeah. but they're not a principal sound making structure. They're kind of like yeah. a secondary, um, or <laughs> try. I, I really don't think they're it, just there. <laughs> they can help. They can definitely, you know, that with the air turbulence they're causing in, in the grunt. Um, give us another, give us a nice metal growl. <gasps> Just grow? Yeah. <clears throat> oh! Now that's that's our arytenoid drumming against mm -hmm. the epiglottis. So if we take that, oh, and we change it and loosen it up and let more air through, oh, oh, yeah. we're going to get more activity. Yeah. Those every this is why grunt and growl are so good. They're, so, they're good friends. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> Hollow. I got to work on my hollow sound because yeah. it just gets airy for me. <laughs> You're high. I love that. Yeah, yeah there you go. 
<laughs> I have to activate more more moving parts to get. <laughs> you have to activate more gro growly parts. Yeah. Mostly, but yeah. So if we add the growling, it adds like more viciousness <laughs> into it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that with with any effect we can talk about like how much are the vocal cords active because with every effect we can make it like pitch um with a pitch or pitchless or at least try to aim it yeah pitchless. if i'm doing like oh we have the oh and then uh on top right mm -hmm. but if i'm doing only <clears throat> not so much vocal cord movement i would say yeah again i'm not a doctor yeah but no i would you can if you're saying yeah yeah it's yeah it's kind of pitchless it's very hollow yeah it's very it's very fun actually to do mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and play around with but uh i do it in the bus all the time <laughs> because no one can hear it <laughs> in the bus <laughs> I always think people can't hear me when I'm making noise and then I'm in the supermarket, you know, maybe <laughs> some weird, um, some weird whistle tones and people are like, <laughs> is that him? Is, is that, <laughs> is that noise coming from him? Or walk around <laughs> the shopping cart, you know, <laughs> I'm going to chocolate. <laughs> That's crazy. 